Hi, and welcome to Demystifying Bio 199 and Undergrad Bio Research. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about what Bio 199 is, how you go about joining a Bio 199 research group, and the processes that you'll need to undertake in order to successfully enroll. So first, let's talk a little bit about what Bio 199 is. Bio 199 is supervised undergraduate research alongside a faculty mentor. So you are performing real research in the lab or in a clinical setting alongside one of the many professors in the School of Biological Sciences or in the School of Medicine. These are graded science units. So on your transcript, it shows up as BioSci 199 or however many units you choose with your faculty member to enroll in. And you do receive a letter grade for it. So it does count towards that science GPA. You will learn bench lab or clinical skills as part of your research experience, because this is a very hands on experience um, and you get to choose which topic that you're doing it. So hopefully you choose a topic that excites you and you have a great experience. Bio 199 also opens the doors to participate in our on campus student research programs, including the undergraduate research and opportunities program, the summer undergraduate research program and excellence in bio sci. There are a couple of prerequisites to Bio 199 participation. First, there are some courses and modules that you have to complete. In order to participate in BioSci 199, you do have to have completed BioSci 94 and the three lab safety modules that you were assigned over the summer prior to your first quarter at UCI. Most likely at this point, you have completed those, but if you're outside the School of Biological Sciences, please feel free to reach out in order to gain access to those modules. You'll also need a faculty mentor. So this is a professor whose research interests you and has accepted you into their lab. And we'll talk a little bit about how you go about finding a faculty mentor. So how do I know that I'm ready for Bio 199? First and foremost, a passion for biology is crucial. You have to be interested in what you're doing. Many Lab experiences are 12 hours a week. And so you really need to find something and be aware of what interests you in order to enjoy the 12 hours a week that you might spend in the lab or in a clinical setting as part of Bio 199. You also have to have good time management. As I said before, most research experiences with Bio 199 are 12 hour a week commitments. So being able to balance your current coursework within the bio major curriculum is really, really important while also taking on Bio 199. So we want to make sure that you are in a good place balancing your existing involvements, your academic life, your social life, and any family or other responsibilities before you take on the additional workload of Bio 199. This is why we usually recommend taking on Bio 199 and pursuing research experience after the second year once you've acclimated and taken most of the lower division biology core, chemistry, and organic chemistry. Finally, you should be ready for a challenge. BioSci 199 and research in general is a much different experience than what you've received in the classroom. You are actually generating knowledge and you are working part of the team with these techniques that you've learned about in your classes and putting them into real life application. So you should be ready for that challenge and ready to broaden your understanding of these topics. So how do you find a mentor? There are a lot of different ways to go about this, and none of them are better than any of the others. On the BioSci Student Affairs end, we provide the Bio199 dashboard and a faculty sponsors list. So if we go to this link, we can briefly take a look at the faculty sponsors list. Here you will find options for Bio 197, 198, and 199. And below you will find a list of all the professors who are offering Bio 199 experiences. This little gold star means that they're currently looking for undergraduate students. And if we click on one of these, we get a full description of the research that the lab conducts, the requirements in order to join their lab, which may be in addition to the requirements that we outlined for Bio 199 participation, as well as the expected time commitment and grading scheme. You can also access contact information here. In addition to using the Bio199 dashboard, 
you can always reach out to professors whose classes you've taken in order to talk about their research and about any opportunities they may have in their lab. If you have gone to office hours with your professor or you have otherwise made a connection, this might be a really good way to approach joining Bio 199 research for you. Also, networking. We hear about so many stories about people who learn about opportunities in labs from their friends, from members of clubs, or from just other students and passing during classroom. So ask your friends about the spots in their lab and see if there's any openings that you might be able to take advantage of. So now that you have an idea of how to find a faculty mentor, we want to talk a little bit about how you go about contacting them. And so the first step to this is doing your own research. So we want you to think about finding five to 10 labs that interest you and look into them, really read up on their lab website if you can find them. This is a great place to look at current projects, past work, past publications, a little bit more about the kind of people inside of the lab that you'll be working with most likely once you join the Bio199 group. Also, we'd recommend reading a couple recent publications from the faculty member. You can find this on the faculty profile or just by searching popular academic search engines such as Google Scholar or PubMed for the faculty member's name. Once you've done your background research, this is when we will start writing the emails to these faculty members. So your faculty member email should follow this basic structure. First, you'd like a greeting, a formal greeting, dear professor, insert name here, is the best way to go about this. You want to make sure that you're conducting yourself with professionalism and making a good impression. The first sentence or two should be an introduction of yourself. So introduce yourself by name, major, what year you are, and any other relevant information that you think would be appropriate for the faculty member to know and illustrate why you are a good fit for the research opportunity. The middle paragraph is the biggest, it should be about three to five sentences, no longer. Uh, it's really important that these emails aren't too long so that faculty members can read them fully um, with the limited time that they do have. And this paragraph is where you put your research to use. Talk about the projects that interest you, the, maybe the methods, if you find that particularly interesting, why the topic relates to you specifically, if that's appropriate, but just make sure that you're incorporating the research that you did with the publications and the research lab website. And finally, you would like to close this out. You can offer a resume here, you can offer times to meet, or you can just sign off with a formal closing, something like best regards, your full name. Important things to include in this email are your full name, your student ID number, as well as a resume of your experiences that are relevant to research. These don't have to be, of course, research experiences, um, but any experience where you are working as part of a team, completing deadlines, accomplishing goals and tasks in an independent manner is great experience to list on a resume. So, you've reached out to a mentor and congratulations, a faculty mentor has a spot for you. What's next in BioSci 199? So in order to enroll in BioSci 199, you need to complete the Bio 199 packet. So the Bio 199 packet is the totality of paperwork completed in coordination with your faculty mentor before you can enroll and start in the lab. As you can see from this diagram, there are two types of packets. There's packet A research and packet B research. You can see on the research dashboard which your faculty member falls into, and you'll be able to complete the corresponding paperwork from there. Packet A is mostly bench research and non-human subjects research. So if you're not dealing with human subjects and your faculty member doesn't deal with human subjects, most likely you'll be filling out packet A. If you are dealing with human subjects, so this could be in a clinical environment, or with human tissue in the lab, you'll be completing packet B. And there are a couple of additional things that you'll need to complete in terms of online training, medical immunization clearance, 
And these requirements are laid out in the Bio 199 research dashboard that we saw earlier. So make sure that, especially for packet B, but also for packet A, that you're getting started on this paperwork early in the quarter or in the preceding quarter in order to make sure that you complete it on time. So let's talk about deadlines. For the fall quarter, winter quarter, spring quarter, and the 10 week summer session, the deadline to submit your Bio 199 packet is Friday of week two by 12 p.m. Now note, this is earlier than the ad drop deadline, which is 5 p.m. We really recommend that you submit much earlier than this in order to ensure that you are able to enroll on time and that you won't face any complications. If you miss this deadline or the 5 p.m. ad drop deadline, once your packet is approved, you will unfortunately not be able to enroll in Bio 199 for that quarter. For summer session one or two, which are on five week sections, this deadline does move up. So it is Friday week one by 12 p.m. And again, the ad drop deadline for those sessions would be at 5 p.m. So please be sure to be aware of these timelines in order to successfully enroll in Bio199. Packets do have an expiration date. So if you complete a packet in summer or fall quarter, it will last you the entire academic year. However, all packets expire at the end of spring quarter each academic year, and new packets are required for summer enrollment or fall enrollment for the next year. You are also responsible for completing quarterly summary reports. So every quarter that you're enrolled in Bio 199, you are required to do a short write-up about what you completed in the lab, what you learned, scholarly resources that you relied upon, as well as progress made towards the hypothesis you're testing. In order to avoid a hold, you must complete these reports on time. Now, one last note for packet B, that medical clearance does take quite a bit of time. Student health center appointments fill up fast at the beginning of the quarter. So please book earlier when possible. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Biological Sciences Student Affairs Office. I would also recommend looking at the undergraduate research dashboard, undergraduate-research.bio.uci.edu as it is the central resource for all things BioSci 199. Thank you for watching and good luck with BioSci 199 research.